this is my 10th video I've made today. Not all of them for, for um, algebra, so you guys are lucky there, huh? But this is 2.6, 2.6. And so we're gonna be doing the slope intercept form. And so let's get to it. So, um, they're gonna ask us to do something different. They're gonna ask us to find the equation of the line. So they've been having us graph lines from the equation. They've been having us um, giving us the equation and asking us to find the slope and all those kind of things. And, um, and so now they're gonna ask us to find the equation of the line. And the first thing that you do when you're trying to find the equation of the line is you identify whether or not the line is horizontal, vertical, or slanted. And you can tell which one of those it is by the slope, right? So that's the first thing to do. That's what you do first. And you can tell by the slope. Or if they maybe gave you a picture of it, we know horizontal ones have slope zero. We know vertical ones have slope undefined or undefined slope. And we know slanted ones have other than this or this. So any number that can have slope equals some number other than zero uh, for a slanted line. And so the slanted lines are, uh, the slope is not zero and the slope is not undefined and then it's slanted. Okay, so we're gonna be focusing right now on if it's a slanted line. And so if it's a slanted line, then you'll know the slope, what it is. And so because that's how you can tell what kind of line it is, maybe you have to count it to find it. Then um, if you know the y-intercept, now this is something that you may not know, but if you know this, this is good and it makes it really easy. Um, and all you have to do is substitute in this equation builder. Um, M is the slope and B is the y-intercept. X and Y stand for all of the infinitely many points on the line. So you really are just going to be filling in for M and for B and the, the X and the Y will be part of the equation builder. If you want to see where this formula comes from, then your book comes with videos and example one um, develops this formula. So I'm going to allow you, if you're interested, go and watch it. Okay, so it says um, for each of the following problems, give the equation of the line with the given slope and y-intercept. So um, since the slope is two, I know that's not zero, that's not undefined, two is some slanted line. So this is the equation builder for a slanted line. And so I'm like, oh, it'd be great if I knew the y-intercept. Well, here the y-intercept is for free, right? And so I'm like, hot diggity dog. The equation builder is y equals mx plus b. And all I have to do is put in what I know m is and put in what I know b is, and then I'm done. y equals two instead of m that's the slope, x plus b, b is uh, five, and then that's the equation of the line. And it's just that simple. And so people wanna make it more hard than it is, um, but we were just given everything we needed. And, um, and so it was a matter of knowing this form, um, this is an equation builder. And there's more than one equation builder. This is the equation builder I would no use if I had a slanted line and knew the y-intercept. So um, uh, there's more than one equation builder. So we're gonna have to, don't worry, we're gonna learn about them. So they wanna reinforce uh, about this equation uh, builder. I wanna reinforce about this equation builder and how this form, and how this form kinda goes. And, um, and so um, I gave us some problems here uh, just to do to reinforce that. And so they're just wanting you to look at the equation and identify the slope and the y-intercept. 
And since the equation, the first step when you're trying to do that is solve the equation for y. And, um, and so this equation is solved for y. So the number coefficient of x, that number right there, is my slope. And I know there's not a number there, but it really is secretly there, right? It's a 1. So the slope is negative 1. And then how you find the y-intercept is you let x equal 0, and you do the arithmetic, and that gives you the y-intercept. And so it is just that number, but, but this is the reason why, is because when you let x equal 0, you get negative times 0, right, minus 8. So this is gone, 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 so I get y equals negative 8. So the y-intercept is negative 8. And of course, in the back of the book, they're going to call it b. b is negative 8, because that's the variable that they use for the y-intercept. So when I go here and it's solve for y, and it has to be in order to find the slope, if it's not solve for y, then what you need to do is you need to solve it for y, and we practice doing that in chapter one. And so all I have to do is say what the slope is. So the slope is um, over three, right? And have you ever seen any numbers running around topless like that? Because um, it's over three, right? Put your finger on x and then the number you see, which is in the denominator three. Yeah, there's a one here too, right? So it's one third, the slope is one third. And the y-intercept, so when I go to find the y-intercept, well, again, you let x equals zero. So this is y equals zero over three plus four thirds. The zero goes away and just y equals four thirds. So if you're asking, is it always just that? And the answer is, well, if you have z if you put zero in for this thing and turn it into zero, the answer is yes. That's what it definitely is. So the y-intercept is four thirds. And so do I have to do that? No, I don't. And in the back of the book, they say b is four thirds, uh, I'm pretty sure. So those are the two things they were asking. Um, the reason that I do that, though, is because for whatever reason, when asked to find the y-intercept, people forget that they learned to do it in section 2.3 by just simply letting x equal zero. And so it gives people trouble uh, on it anyway. So that's the reason that I continue to, to do it. Okay, so this one's solved for y, this equation. It's a slanted line. And, um, and so the, the slope is 4. The equation's not solved for y, you have to make it so. And the y-intercept, well, remember how you find it? You let x equal 0 and do the arithmetic. So this would be y equals 4 times 0, y equals 0. So the y-intercept is 0, or b equals 0. See it here? Plus 0. There it is, right? And so it was hanging out over there. You just don't have to write plus zero. So that's the reason we didn't feel like we knew what it is. Now this one, there's more than one way of looking at it. Um, but what I would say when I look at this one is I wouldn't say that it's a slanted line. This was slanted, this was slanted, this was slanted. When I look at this line, I would say it is horizontal. And all horizontal lines have slope zero. That's a memory verse. I've memorized that. Every single horizontal line has slope zero. So that's a way of looking at it, if you like. The other way of looking at it is it is in the form y equals mx plus b. It just must be that b is zero, because zero times x wipes out the x, right? So the slope is zero. Now our y-intercept going to find the y-intercept now. You let, in your equation, x equals 0 and solve for y. Well, this equation does not care about x at all. y is 7. So the y-intercept is 7, or b is 7. So that's that story there. So that was some practicing identifying the slope and the y-intercept. This was one practice because it's so cheesy easy, but people forget how to do it on 
finding the equation of the line, there's practice in your book too. Just plugging in. On this one here, they're wanting me to find the, the slope and the y-intercept, and they're wanting me to graph it. And so this is problem 16. They ask me to find the slope and the y-intercept, but you notice that this equation is not solved for y. And so they didn't give as many examples as I thought on just already solved for y, so it was just free. Um, they more went for these examples uh, where you have to do the work to solve for y, but I thought it'd be good just to have the practice of, of finding it. But, but now that's my thing is I notice, oh, um, it's slanted uh, to find, that's my thought, the slope and the y-intercept first solve equation for y. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I have here 2x minus 5y equals 10 and I want to get x the, um, the y's on one side and the non-y's on the other side lost my pencil and so I've been now I've moved into purple pen and um, I don't know purple pens not making me as happy as pencil did and um, and so this guy right here is not a Y this guy is a Y this guy is not a Y and I want to separate them by whether they're Y I'm going to leave the Y over here so he's going to stay and remember it's add and subtract is how you get to move the furniture and so I want to move the, the 2x. So it's positive, so I'm going to have to subtract 2x. Typically, you write it before. And we talked about in Chapter 1 when we practiced these that, uh, that you got to choose if you wanted to write it before or after. But typically, in, when you're graphing them, using them the graph, you write it before. So this would be negative 2x. And then I need a sign before 10. What do you guys think the sign is before 10? Yeah, it's positive. Uh, almost done, but I'm not quite done, right? I need to divide by five. And when you divide or multiply, you have to do it to all the pieces um, because of the distributive property, right? Do it to all, right? So I'm gonna divide by negative five, divide by negative five, divide by negative five. Reduce it if it reduces. Y equals, so this is two fifths, negative divided by a negative is a positive x and 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2 so we have plus of negative 2 which is same as subtract 2 and so now I can tell everyone the slope it's now free the slope is 2 fifths notice I did not write 2 fifths x writing that the slope is 2 fifths x I often get that you're supposed to put your finger on x and put the number that's there this is wrong because x is a variable and that would make your slope be any value under the sun. x could be 0, then your slope would be 0. x could be 15, then your slope would be 6. x could be et cetera, et cetera, and your slope would be something other than 2 fifths. And so that's why it is wrong because x is a value that changes. Here's x is 0, here x is 1, here x is 2 but the slope is constant, two-fifths. It's not changing. And then the y-intercept is also constant, and it's given for free right there. It's negative two. So they said, now put this together with what you did in the previous section, might be two sections ago, and they want me to use this to graph it. So the first thing you do when you're gonna graph it is you plot your point is your first step, which is the y-intercept. So here it is, negative two. Then the second thing is that you write your slope as a fraction and identify the rise and the run. So my slope, my rise is two, my run is five. So that tells me over five, one, and it's a counting game, two, three, four, five, up to one, two. Coincidentally, it fell on the x-axis. It could have fallen anywhere, uh, and where it falls is where it falls, and now I can draw the line in there. So 
So I use the slope and the y-intercept to graph it. Sometimes um, the directions tell people to use the slope and the y-intercept and get a graph of it. And, um, and I have students that are like, well, I'd rather pick points like we did in chapter uh, 2.3. And, um, and make the table. Remember this table for graphing something? And I'd, I'd rather make the table and whatnot and not do that. Well, if it asks you to find the slope and the y-intercept, make sure that you list those. And then if you want to make a ta the table, you can, and then you can put those points and check. Uh, you could use it as a double check if you like. Uh, that would be absolutely fabulous. And you could go back in the original equation, right? Two times zero equal uh, minus 5y equals 10, so it must be negative 2. And then you could use uh, y is 0, so then 2x equals 10, y, x would be 5, right? So now I've got two points on there. Maybe I'll try to get um, a, a third point. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a third point that's very nice uh, from, um, from there. Um, maybe if I picked 5 here, so I'm going to have to put that work out here because otherwise I won't be able to do it. So x is 5. Oh, I already have that. Uh, so no, x is 5 won't work uh, for me to pick. How about negative 5? Can't pick something already in the list. So this is negative 10 minus 5y equals 10 plus 10. So if you were a person that preferred to do this, you certainly could. 20. So that's y is negative 4. So you notice at that point, uh, 0, negative 2 is right here. 5, 0 is that point. And negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is this point right here. Uh, and they were on the line, of course, you know, thing because of my ruler, uh, I do my best. And you can imagine how bad it gets if you don't have a ruler. And so that's the reason you are required to have a ruler and draw it. So if you draw your lines without having something straight to draw them with, so your lines are really, really crooked and not straight like my line is, um, then um, you're not going to be getting full credit. So make sure that you have something to draw a straight line with, uh, whether that's a, um, a driver's license or any other ID uh, or whatever have you. Then if I had used those three points, I could easily identify the y-intercept, it's negative two, and I could count to identify the slope. So I could do it backwards if I really wanted to. Um, they were telling me use the slope and the y-intercept to graph it, but I could graph it any way I want and use the graph to find the y-intercept and the slope if I wanted. I mean, it's all good. But if they ask you to do that, you have to make sure you have all of them. The graph, the slope, the y-intercept. Okay, I hope this is 2.9 as well and not just 2.6. Oh, it is. There was, gonna, there was panic. Uh, panic. I've uh, made videos since 5.30 this morning, and it's now late in the afternoon, and I'm getting panicky. And so um, a horizontal line, remember, has slope zero. And a vertical line, remember, has slope undefined. And so you can tell if something is horizontal or vertical by its slope, by looking at it, or bit by being told. And so some of the problems in the, in the book tell you, hey, it's a horizontal line. And uh, they tell you, hey, it's a vertical line. Or sometimes they give you a picture of it and you can see that it's a horizontal line or a vertical line. And they're cheesy easy if it is a horizontal or a vertical line to find the equation is really easy because this is how you do it. It's just simply y equals a number. So you just gotta figure out what that number is. And so, and the vertical line, Remember the slope is undefined on a vertical line and it's cheesy easy, it's just x equals a number. So it's not much work at all. We've already done the slanted lines where you know the y-intercept and it's cheesy easy. So if it's slanted and you know the y-intercept, it's a matter of plugging two numbers in and then there's the equation of the line. This is a matter of plugging one number in, one number in. Cheesy easy, but you have to know how to do it. And if you don't practice, you won't be able to do it. And so, 
If it's slanted though, and you know the slope, but don't know the y-intercept, you know just any old point on the line, it's a little bit more work, but it's only a matter of substituting in three things. You substitute in the number for x, for m, the slope, for x1 and for y1. Bop, bop, bop. And then you solve the equation uh, for y. And our book has us put it in standard form, and if you want to do that, you can. Uh, certainly put it in um, standard form, but it's not, it's not, it's not required. So, um, so if you want to put it in standard form, you certainly can. And so we're going to give a try to that. So um, they're asking me here to find the equation of the line. So that's what they're asking me to find. And so I'm saying to myself, uh, well, what is the type of line? Because that's the first thought. Right, this is what I'm thinking. Number one, type. Is it horizontal? Is it vertical? Or is it slanted? And I can tell the type by the slope. If this is zero, it's horizontal. Well, it's not zero, so it's not horizontal. If this is undefined, then it's uh, vertical. Well, it's not vertical. If it's anything other than those two, then it's slanted. So it's slanted. Then I want to know, do I know the y-intercept? Because that's my next thought when it's slanted. So because it's slanted, I go into um, slanted, right? Um, I would be thinking something if it was horizontal or something different, horizontal or vertical. But because it's slanted, I think, do I know b, which is the y-intercept, right? Do I know that? Well, if I plot this point, just real quick, over 3, down 4, this is this point right here. And you see how this point is not on the y-axis. So do I know this question mark? The answer is nope, I don't. But I do know a point on the line. This is a non-special point. The y-intercept is the only special point. So I don't know the special point. So that means that I'm going to use this formula y minus y1, this is for non-special points, m times x minus x1. So this is x1, y1, and there's m. And all you have to do is boom these numbers in here. Minus, parenthesis, equals m, so I'm going to leave a blank there, x minus and then parenthesis. So for y1, we're going to put in negative 4. For m, we're going to put in 4 thirds right out here. And for x, we're going to put in, for x1, we're going to put in 3. And I didn't need the parenthesis on the inside. I only really need the parenthesis if I have the double negative um, there. And so um, then the story becomes, and it's always the same when you're simplifying this, uh, the first step is resolve the double negative. So I have that, so that's plus. y plus 4 is 4 thirds x minus 3. The second step is to distribute. It's always the same. Oh, I'm going to run out of room. So I'm going to distribute. So when I distribute, I have x plus 4 equals 4 thirds x. That's why they were practicing me on distributing this stuff. And this is 4 thirds times minus 3. So I know it's negative, and it's 4 thirds times 3. The 3's drop, and I have 4. And I'm going to write this up here, because I'm out of room. So I'm going to write it right here. y uh, plus 4 equals 4 thirds x minus 4. And then the next step, you want to get y by itself. Remember, that was the goal, was to get y all by itself. And then you'll be done. And so the next step is, and it's always the same, so the steps are resolve double negative if you have it, distribute. The third step is to use add and subtract to get y all by itself. In this case, I'm going to be subtracting 4. Then I'll have my answer, y equals 4 thirds, x minus 8. And so that's my, and that's the only one that's hard work, um, is the one where you have a slanted and not the y-intercept. 
And so uh, I, that's why I want to test for those other things because they're a lot less work. And so it's the only one that's hard work. So we're going to continue here doing a few of them. Find the equation of the line that passes through each pair of points. Write the answer in slope intercept form. And so I'm saying to myself, well, I have to know the type. So this is what I start thinking. Any times they ask me to find the equation of the line, I want to know what type of line is it. And there are three types of line, horizontal, vertical, and slanted. And how you can tell what kind of line it is, is by its slope. So I can use those points to find the slope, and then I'll know what type of line it is. So I'm going to do that. So to find the type of line, I'm going to find the slope. And the slope, remember, the slope formula, x1, y1, x2, y2, boink, minus boink, right, minus boink. So let's see, y2 is negative 2, y1 is 6, x2 is 3, x1 is negative 3. So when the dust clears, I have negative 8 in the numerator, and I have 3 plus 3, which is 6, in the denominator, which is the same as negative 4 thirds. So that's my slope. And so now in my thoughts of is it horizontal, is it vertical, or is it slanted, I know it's not horizontal, they have slope 0. I know that it's not vertical, they have slope undefined. My slope's negative 4 3 thirds, so I know it's slanted. Then I ask myself, well, do I know the y-intercept, right? And this is not the y-intercept, plot it. And you'll see that it's not on the y-axis. One, two, three, up six. So there it is, and that's not a special point, right? And this other point, over three, down two, is not a special point either. So those are the two points I have. So when I think that it's slanted, then I hope I know the y-intercept. But nope, I don't, right? So since I don't, I don't get to take the shortcut. I have to use the long, but even the long way isn't too, isn't too tough. So I already have y1 identified. It's 6. y minus 6. I have the slope identified. It's negative 4 thirds. I'm plugging in into this formula y1, m, and x1, right? And here's y1, here's x1, and here's m. x minus, and then now I have the double negative, right? Negative 3, because uh, it's so remember the steps are resolve double negative. So here's my double negative, so I'm going to resolve it. If I didn't have double negative, I wouldn't resolve it, right? So you want to write it as a plus if you have it. Then you want to distribute. It's always the same. So if you practice it, it becomes cookbook. And so um, it's like a recipe. So this is negative, and we're multiplying 4 over 5 times 3, which you can do with your calculator if you like. So if you're like, I already handled the sign, it's negative. So if you're like, uh, you know, I've been um, been watching video since 3 o'clock in the morning, um, then you can get your calculator out, right? So 12 over 5. And then you use, so the steps are always the same. Resolve double negative if you have it. Distribute, did it. And then add or subtract to get y by itself. So you're going to be adding 6 in this case, and then y will be by itself. So y equals negative 4 fifths x. And then I just have to do that arithmetic, which I'm going to do with my calculator. So negative 12 fifths plus 6. And walla boom, I have 18 over 5. So plus 18 over 5. And then I'm all done. And I almost was out of room. Just barely made it. Just barely made it. I guess I could have gone over here, right? But those are my thoughts. 
And now you might be thinking, well, what if I have something different? Uh, what if I have a horizontal one? What if I have a vertical one? Well, don't worry, don't worry, my friend. We're gonna do those two. Okay, so I'm on this one, and it says find the equation of the line, and anytime I am asked to find the equation of the line, I think, what type is it? And there are three types, horizontal, vertical, and slanted. And you can tell what type it is by the slope. Well, they didn't give me the slope. Well, but they gave me a way of knowing the slope, right? I can find it by calculating it. The slope is y2 minus y1. So they didn't give me what I needed, they gave me a way of finding what I needed. So I knew that in order to type the line, I needed to know the slope. Um, that's a way of typing the line, right? And so I'm typing the line here. This is one minus, and here I'll put my parentheses in here, y1 is also one, and I have zero in my numerator, and my denominator, I have two minus three, which is negative one, so this is zero. And so this time, when I say, is it horizontal, the answer is yes, it is, because horizontal lines have slope zero. Now, I don't have to worry about saying it's slanted and then thinking about the y-intercept and praying it has it, right, that I have it. What I have to do when it's, uh, when it's horizontal, it's easier. Because it's horizontal, the equation of the line is y equals a number. Your book says b. And all I have to do is figure out what that number for y is. And all I have to do is look at the ordered pair and see how this ordered pair says y is 1. And this one agrees. y is 1. So y is 1 is the equation of the line. So it's not real hard. And all of this thought, you know, um, we wrote out all of our thoughts, but that's the story. I always am asked the question, what if they disagree? What if they say something different? Then they wouldn't have had zero as the slope and thus would not have been horizontal. So if you got two points and the y's agree, it's horizontal and that's the equation. If you have two points and the x's agree, it's vertical and they're telling you what the equation is. And so anyway, so this is the thoughts. Here they're asking me find the equation of a vertical line. So my first thought, anytime someone asks me to find the equation of a line is what type is it, horizontal, vertical, or slanted, and it's like they told me what it is. And so knowing that it's vertical, all vertical lines have um, the slope, oh, slope undefined, I don't need to know the slope, I wanna know the equation. The equation is x equals a number. So all I have to do is look over here where x is. And coincidentally, x is one. And so that's the equation of the line. I don't have another point on the line in order to verify uh, it with another point. If you drew the line though, here's the point, one, three, one, three, and it is a vertical line do you notice that you have lots of other points? And what do all of those points have for their x value? One, every single one of them, right? So anyway, so that's the story there. And, um, and so, oh my goodness gracious. That's it for section 2.6.